Welcome to this week's drum department. I'm Kyle. That's Katie. We're going to find out if percussionists really can learn to play the drums. Join us. The drum department starts now. Now, let me hear taking it up from two triangles. One. No, that's to be taking it up. The same rhythm that they've been playing. Everybody plays so well. Taking it up. All right. One. It's better. It's a little better. <laughs> you make it somehow more rhythmic so it's not just a clink. No, it sounds like the doorbell. Taking it up. I don't know how to tell you to do it, but do it. One. Well, yeah, it's worse. It's worse. <laughs> well, congratulations. Welcome, everybody. It is time for the drum department. Joining us today is Katie Reif. And we have, of course, Doc Aaron Graham here. Uh, today, we are going deep on classical percussion because it's like a foreign world to drummers. It's a whole new thing for us, right? And I think it's important to make we learn about the things we can share and the similarities in what happens with us. So uh, we just saw that video with Bernstein off the top there. Is it Bernstein or Bernstein? Anyone know? No? There's different thoughts. I'm not <laughs> weighing in. <laughs> Leo. Or Lenny. Sorry. Lenny. Yeah. Lenny. <laughs> Sorry, just go for his name base. <laughs> so yeah. uh, Leonard Bernstein, of course, is the like one of the more uh, acclaimed conductors in the past, I guess, 100 years, I would say. He was notoriously vicious to players at times. In that video, we see him uh, treating a couple of triangle players uh, with his ire. But he's still pretty kind to them, I think. Overall. It was like a student, like a summer student festival or something, too. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't think it was a pro situation. So, Katie, uh, tell us a little bit about, so what do you do? What's your, what's your gig? What do you, what's your thing? Yeah, so I am a, a concert or a classical percussionist. I play in orchestras. I play in new music ensembles. Um, I guess the biggest difference, I don't know. I, like, I started thinking about this going in today. It's like, well, what's, you know, percussionists or drummers? Drummers are percussionists. We're all friends here. Um, and we all do a variety of things. So I guess my variety of things involves more different instruments. Because mm -hmm. um, some weeks I'm playing that vibraphone or a big classical setup. Some weeks I'm just playing a triangle. Mm -hmm. um, so there can be just a big fluctuation on a week-to-week -week basis, depending on your gig. I mean, if you're a timpanist in a symphony orchestra, you're playing timpani, like, most of the time. Right. Um, so it does depend on, you know, where your path goes. Same as, you know, if you're playing in the same band all the time or if you're the sort of person that's playing with other people's bands, so. Totally. And, yeah. and of course, I think the big difference, too, uh, a lot of drummers, I mean, there are some very school drummers, and some drummers can play percussion, Aaron being one of them, <laughs> of course. Uh, but I think, in general, most drummers don't even consider concert percussion as a, as a path or a benefit or any of those things. Though I think there's a lot to be learned there. Um, would you say you, number one, do you read every gig you're doing or are you improvising ever or feeling I, it out? Yeah, I do improvise as well. I mm -hmm. mean, that's not a standard feature for a classical percussionist. Um, but I mean, just the nature of percussion and drumming, like compared to other instruments in the classical realm, we do so much more improvising. Yeah. Uh, because so many traditions of percussion aren't notated. Right. right? And so, and just inherently, like we like to jam. <laughs> right, of course. So whereas other instruments, I think, do more just straight reading, I think it's very useful to not read. Um, but the sort of gigs that you're doing with an orchestra, you're absolutely like, here's your sheet music, here are the rest you're counting, here's all of the musical instructions for you. I mean, dynamics and whatnot, you still have to make it sound good. But oh. then, you know, by the time I get to the second or third show, as a lot of it's just up here at that point. Right. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily relying on, oh, I need to play those those crash cymbals for 20 bars. It's like, oh, I know where I'm going and I know the next thing that I'm going to hit. No, I hear that clarinet cue and I'm done. So I'm still counting, but it's not... You're not buried on the page. That's actually a good point. Yeah. Hearing clear net a cue, that's like, same thing for a lot of drummers if they're playing by feel. They're waiting for a vocal cue or a guitar cue. Right? Yeah. Same kind of thing. Uh, Aaron, now you straddle both worlds. You, you're, you're feeding both, yep. right? You're a rock drummer if you want to be. You can write and play all the other stuff. Where do you fall in this world? Like, do you feel there's a big split between the two worlds for you? Or, like, do you have to think differently? Uh, yes, I think... It's a tough question. I think there is a, you say, a big split between the two worlds. I would say definitely because you're, whether you're reading or improvising, I think there's, 
it's a different kind of reading and it's a different kind of improvising, right? right? Because I think, you know, a lot of drum set players can go to a gig and improvise, but they're most of the time improvising within a certain kind of style, mm -hmm. right? Where you can read a chart, but there's still a lot of freedom in reading a chart versus reading a triangle part where there is no improvisation, right? So it's 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 tough. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I was a drum set player originally. Okay. I would say I'm a drum set player at heart. Um, and it took me a really long time to really feel comfortable in the in the classical world. So. And do you feel comfortable now, or do you still feel like a drummer in the classical world? I'm starting to swing back to the drummer okay. drummer side of things now that I'm 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 out of it more than I more than I used to be. So. Now, Katie and I were talking before this kind of trying to formulate what what we would talk about. And one of the things that you mentioned was that most of what you do is hands. There's not, I mean, sure, there's dabber pedal and stuff yeah. or t tuning timpani, but you're not doing a lot of four-way independence things. And one of the things I was thinking about was talking about triangle playing or timpani. It's like there are cases where you're waiting minutes, I don't want to say hours, but close, and like you have a responsibility to play maybe. <laughs> you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe four notes, but you cannot get them wrong. Right. Yeah. Right? Drum set, you can kind of, you can blend it out. You can, you know, you, a lot of times drummer is playing majority of the song most times really and you know we can control a lot of that environment as a percussionist you are a very key piece to a very large ensemble mm -hmm. but you're also a piece of that you're like a part of the keystone of that you're not necessarily the backbone right so that how do you deal with <laughs> that stress of all those rests and making sure you get it right <laughs> You just really do your prep going in, mm -hmm, right? right? And so when you're showing up to rehearsal, there's no question about like, oh, where do I play? Oh, is this bar seven or eight of this rest? It's like, you know exactly where you're coming in because there's enough other variables, right? So you take a piece of like classical symphonic music. You're not just listening to like the one recording that the band did that you want to play the song of as you, if you were, you know, trying to learn something particular in drum kit. Um, you know, you listen to other people's covers, sure, but like there's that one recording that you're going to, right? right? Whereas symphonic music, it's like, well, let's look up like five different recordings and listen like what happened here and what happened with the tempo there. And knowing that like when you get to rehearsal, it's going to be maybe one of those things or none of those things, uh -huh. yeah. right? And so that you know where you're coming in and what you have to play so well mm. that that like you have time to think about those other variables. I would I would say that's one of the biggest strengths I gained from living in the classical world for a while is just uh, prep. Yeah, and consistency because you can go, you know, you can go play a, a jazz drum set gig and you play a ninety-minute show and you have some, fill, you know, there's spots where you'll try a fill and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, some things work, some things don't. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're going to learn a part to a ninety-minute symphony, um, especially if somebody's going to pay you to do it, you're going to do the prep work to where you can play that fifteen, twenty, thirty times over and not miss a note ever and play it. You know? Right. So. Yes. Yeah, that's that's one of the big differences I found. Yeah, because yeah, I know for myself, I've studied a bit of both. Well, obviously, drum set, I studied a lot. But when it came to classical percussion or anything legit, if you will, was the, that execution, that level of concentration to get it the same sounding or better every time. I always found a real challenge because there wasn't that room for interpretation or like, tuck it at the top, play it that way, whatever the conductor wants. And it'd be, it, I found that really stressful because I think I would get easily distracted if I had that gig. I would not do well as a classical percussionist, for sure. <laughs> uh, but um, so I, I, I know, I'm, I'm in awe of the things you can do and how you do them. Um, I want to hear from the folks out there in YouTube and in Drumeo. Um, have you ever played anything like timpani, kettle drum, as they call them? Um, timpani. Concert bass drum, timpani, yes. Snare drum. Have you ever played in a concert band or school band? Or have you played in your local orchestra? Have you thought about it? There's a lot of benefit to be had there, I think. And we're going to learn about that today in what, how I can learn to do some stuff on the vibes. And I'm going to teach you to play a cool groove. Because you can play drums. Yeah, a little. Like, the episode's titled, Can Classical Percussion Play Drums? <laughs> the answer is, empirically, yes, but. <laughs> All right, see you next week. <laughs> Bye. We yes. We're good now. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think the other thing, too, like you mentioned, is like your homework's not much different than my homework if I'm listening to a song. Yeah, we were talking about this. It's like yeah. I'm going to be putting on recordings and playing along to recordings just like you're putting along yep. to recordings and playing along to recordings. Okay, now when you do that, do yep. you use the score and, and follow along or do you literally just put it on and listen to it when you're 
working out or doing your stuff. I mean, I put it on. I mean, it's, I'll listen to stuff ambiently in my car and whatever. Yeah. something I have coming up. But it's like I'll put it on my AirPods and play along with it. I'll, I'll sit down and, like, listen through it with the score. It kind of depends on the piece. I might just, like, go to the Timps and start playing and be like, oh, this, like, who am I playing with here is always my biggest question. Mm. Right? Because you get classical percussion parts and often they don't look that hard it's like you're just gonna go like one two and three four and you're like great i can do that um but the the question is like well who am i playing with or if you got like one triangle note it's like well when i come in on that downbeat like what else is happening oh there's a harp gliss that i'm Uh, landing with oh there's a flute entrance that i need to cue in with uh and so much of the classical stuff is like you're in a big band Right, you've got like 60 to like 90 people sometimes on stage with you. And so knowing where your part fits in and how you add to that texture and the color is the challenge of it, or like the fun of it. Is it yeah. difficult, like when you're playing in a large venue with a 90 piece orchestra, is it hard to hear time in that space? Because it's so open and cacophonous when the orchestra's playing, or is that, are you really relying on the conductor for that? or? Are you just able to sound a lock in with the sound of the orchestra and do your thing? It's a mix of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, in an orchestra, you have like 60, 80, 90 people, depending on the piece. Um, but they're grouped in sections, and then each section has a leader. So, the people in like the flute section are following the principal flute. Right. Okay. Right. So, you kind of have like everybody's on the stage together, but then there's these kind of pods, right? In the French horn section, you're following the principal horn player. In the percussion section, you're going with where the principal is putting the beat. Um, okay. And everyone's going with the conductor. Like conductor's super important. I would say I have you know I was coming into today going like Katie, you know Katie don't say don't say the wrong things. Uh, we need conductors. We want to keep you employed. There's no intention. We can't, you're not we can't keep do you it without so. them. It's so important. I mean you're navigating this you know big musical works with an unwieldy swath of people. Uh, it would not go well without someone. <laughs> unwieldy in front. swath of people. That's a great quote. You know as opposed to chamber music when we do stuff that's what we call it when there's no conductor. Um, going back to like the Italian like music to camera, like music that happened in a house, chamber, chamber music. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. um, there was church music and there was chamber music. Um, and you know, we work without a conductor and then you're writing all sorts of cues in your part to know what's going on and it's something you're spending a lot of time putting together and it's usually with an ensemble you play a lot with. Okay. Right? Like a sextet, a quartet, whatever, you're, you're that tight. Um, but there's, you very quickly hit a point. 12, 13 people where it's like you want a conductor right. to bring that all together. It's and like, so like you mentioned, the whole idea of an orchestra having those lead players, principals in each each section, uh, it really does, if you think of it that way, it does seem much easier to sort of navigate because you're not listening for 16 violins, you're listening for... Sometimes you are. Yes, but you're listening <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the ultimate sound of that unit of 16 led by the principal, I would suppose. Yeah. Um, but speaking of conducting, we're going to get into this right now. So uh, I've had to do a couple of drum set gigs playing with uh, bigger groups. And I've, I've done pit work following a conductor, and I don't get it. I mean, I get it, yeah, but I don't quite get it. So uh, Aaron has graciously uh, offered his services because he can, he can conduct. He's obviously a conductor. He's can, had yeah. to conduct. Well, you know, you've had to conduct things. Um, so you mentioned conductors are very important because he's not just he or she are not just waving their arms around for fun, right? Um, but how time is felt with conducting. If you've never seen conducting before, you're going to learn about this right now. So there's that person at the front of the orchestra that's the one with the back turned to you, right? How rude, right? <laughs> The entire performance, right? But they they're the ones. To do. <laughs> they're the sorcerer pulling everything out of this sixty or eighty or ninety person orchestra, right? Yeah. Uh, but so, if we're doing something in say four four time, Aaron, if you're conducting that, what does it look like? Um, this is great. Just right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As yeah. if you were right here conducting. You're conducting right. the audience. So we're gonna follow along. So, conducting YouTube. Uh, That's right. <laughs> yes. So my teacher taught me floor, wall, wall, ceiling. Same teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Like so uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. So there's always that downbeat in the middle, right? One, two, three. Now, right. when I'm following a conductor, I always feel like they're way ahead of me. Is that odd? Am I wrong, you're, or is that you're not wrong? Okay. Mm-hmm. So how does that work? It kind of varies by ensemble. 
Like some ensembles play very much like on the stick, like you drop the downbeat and that's where we are. Some ensembles like collectively react after. So it's kind of like it's almost coming on the way up before you feel that beat. That's so tricky. And you just have like, I mean, it's it's the same with bands that you play in, right? Like people feel time in different places and you just have to, whatever group you're with, like figure out what's going on on this one and like join that, join that vibe. And if a conductor, I imagine all conductors have different styles. Mm -hmm. Right, and different preferences. They may be way ahead, and it's, you learn to deal with that. Have you had trouble with it with a conductor? Have you ever had a conductor you work with where you're like, yeah, I'm not getting it? Or is it just me? Uh, no. Nope. You don't know have to say who it is. <laughs> have you ever had conductor trouble? That's an important question. You mean as far as like, I can't tell what's going yeah, on here? Yeah, you have a hard time with sure. it. Sure. <laughs> okay. And what was troubling about it? Just when things aren't clear enough, uh, right? Okay. There's always those moments where you're like, I need a little more clarity okay. than what I'm getting. Um, and sometimes it happens that just like something is so musically loose that, you know, sure. like that that's just where we are stylistically. And then you have to play something in there and that, that that's a challenge. Like directing through something that's rubato or slower mm -hmm. and you're like, eh, it could be yeah. this, could be a little I loud. mean, there's also different instruments speak differently. If you're playing a pianissimo violin note, you kind of like with the bow, you come in on that, right? Playing pianissimo triangle notes, right. so you come in with that and you're like, well, here it is. And there's nothing I can do about this now that I've put this into the air. That's actually a great point yeah. because if you're conducting, actually, you wouldn't mind, Aaron, if you conduct again, mm -hmm. please. Yeah. So if you're doing that, Three. So I'm seeing a downbeat like this. Right? That's where I would feel it, okay? Yeah. But you're right. If, if I was going to play a hand clap, that's going to be somewhere there. But if you're playing a violin note there, yeah. it's going to take probably by your halfway up mm -hmm. for that note to... But you're not just like watching the conductor before the bar you the bar you come in, right? You're like you're listening to the orchestra while you're watching okay. the conductor. So you're figuring out like, okay, you're here and I hear the time and I know where I'm coming in. Or if you're coming in with the the violins, you're watching the conductor and the concert master, which is the name for the head of the violins, yes. at the same time, because you're watching he or she place their bow while you're also, you know, you can see oh, them both okay. at the same time. That was one thing that took me a long time to learn is if I knew my triangle note comes in with that piccolo that's 40 feet away from right. me. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need to stare at the conductor. I can just watch them go this, see, and I just play right with them. See, right? this is exactly what I want to know. Right. Because when I would follow a conductor... <laughs> it's like we're giving away all the secrets. <laughs> no, but, but that's the thing. Like, is I'm trying like to translate directly what they're doing, and I'm like, my ears are telling me a different story, mm -hmm. and I'm like, which one do I go with? Both. I love that. Both. Okay, so it's the same as when you're reading a, sheet, a piece of music, too. It's right. Yeah. The music will only tell you, hopefully, the right notes. But yeah. it's not telling you the whole story. Your ears are going to tell you. Or if someone, heaven forbid, drops a bar or something happens or, you know. Well, uh, okay. You're always listening. Uh, can you share a story of maybe an example of when something bad did happen in a, in, in a performance where, have you ever had a situation where you had to stop? No. I mean, sometimes there are situations where you kind of wish you had, you could go back, but you okay. can't, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like once, once, once that train leaves the station. Um, sure, I can, I can, without naming anything, no, I'll tell a rather not. terrifying story. Uh, it was a student orchestra thing. Um, I had a xylophone solo, and the bar before I was supposed to come in, the conductor counted a bar of three instead of four. That's important. And so when the down became, I didn't play because right. I was like, I like this is supposed to be the bar that I come in now, but like. That's not what's supposed to happen before, except I was the only thing that was happening in that bar. And so then the whole orchestra was like, well, where are we now? And so there was a good flail and we found our way back together and it was fine. Um, but yeah, it was a real, and then afterwards it'd be like, like what happened? And thankfully people in the section were like, well, no, like this is what happened. I was like, okay, like, cause you go through like, was it me? Like, what did I do there? Right. Could I have managed this better? Uh, thankfully, there's not that many solo styles. <laughs> Bit of a jazz moment in the orchestra. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and people, you know, you get the brave people who are like, okay, well, I'm just going to come in and mm -hmm. like come with me, Save and the like day. We'll, we'll make this happen. And then the people that will wait until, and you want both. You don't want everyone to jump in and go like, okay, here we are, because then you get four different versions. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, the lessons you want to learn in Man, school. All that stuff you're saying is exactly what happens in the band. I would say, please. I was gonna. I was gonna say, off. in instances like that, that's when you really know when the great conductors are. You can tell the. You, you can tell the great conductors apart from the okay conductors because the, the great conductors know what they have to do to pull everybody back together. Oh, when sure. people are in differing bars. Oh, like, I was like, so terrified. I never even said, "Oh, this is what happened." Mm. <laughs> 
Like, he, I'm sure this person still thinks, that, like, what did she do? You know, yeah. doesn't think about her anymore. <laughs> Something like, happened. I couldn't even, like, I was so young and so mousy that I was just, like, couldn't even talk to him about it. Uh, it was so, just, like, just to be clear, now, when they gave you the wrong, basically wrong information, did you come in where you thought you should? Like, what, that split second, which did you choose? I didn't play. At all? No. Okay. That's, and then, that's and then it was more, just a gap. So I was like, well, that was clearly the moment that I was supposed to come in, but I didn't know because it was like, well, but that... Okay, so yeah. now, with the experience you have now, what would you think you would have done? I would have come in. On, I would have been like... Would you just made that a bar of three and come in on the one? Within a beat or so. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's empty? Okay, great, start playing. <laughs> and then it. the conductor would have found the next downbeat and yeah. we would have been fine. That's the other thing, too, it's important. It's like... Even though it's stressful, it's still it's like you got to be able to react. Like that's that. right. Yeah. yeah. See, there's more jazz going on here than I expected. I love there this. Go, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there's this like just this this feeling of this being so uh, you know um, button up and 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 square, you know, and it's not true. It's not true, right? Okay. Uh, now we're gonna get to the segment where we're gonna see if you can play the drums. And oh, we're there can... already. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, so Aaron's gonna be our judge today. <laughs> I'm terrified. I mean, I've stood in front of keyboard percussion before, but I, I do not claim to be a keyboard percussionist. But I'm going to start with you. Yeah, let's, let's definitely start here. So now, you do play some drums, but you do not call yourself a drummer. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm not a drummer, but I'm not a drum kit player. Okay, there we go. Great. Yeah. So show us uh, something you would play when you sit down behind a drum oh, kit. Oh, jeez. Perfect. Okay, so great hand technique. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Uh, uh, but Five you know, <laughs> super comfortable. You you look comfortable. Doesn't yeah. feel comfortable, does it? It's it's a nice kit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you you like you know percussionists, drummers. We're all concerned about how things sound. Yeah, I right? like these hats. That's a nice sound drum kit, right? Yeah. So now you mentioned one of the the key things you felt about being drum set player versus a, a percussionist is using your feet. Sure. Right. I mean, that's a huge difference. Like, so, we don't use our feet. I mean, use your feet, I guess, rhythmically to pedal a vibraphone. Sure. But I came to percussion from a piano, so it's like, grow up doing that anyways. Um, whereas, like, my feet aren't very good. I'll admit it. Because <laughs> <laughs> they haven't had to be. Right. But you, of course, things like good time is something you've had to learn with this stuff. Of course, you're, if we put you, if we thrust you in a band, I'm sure you would do fine. All the experience you have, we help you through. Regardless, if you could play all the cool diddles and daddles and all the great things, right? But uh, let's see what we can get you to do today. I'm gonna, gonna challenge you to do a couple of things. Okay. Using your feet, so okay. we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna teach you how to play Walk This Way. Cool. Okay, it's Aerosmith. Did you, did you cheat and check it out? I didn't. Okay, good, great. And we talked earlier, like we weren't supposed so to tell now, each other what we were yeah, doing. Yeah, we're gonna do this across the room. I like, I like it. This, this is great. So I have to stand here and feel uncomfortable. So well, you can be uncomfortable there. Uh, so, uh, the so the, the, I'm gonna sing the beat to you. Okay. So oh God. And, and basically the bass drum part. We'll start with the bass drum part. Okay. Yep. So it's boom, dun dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Keep going. And then your snare is gonna be. Okay. Singing is cool. What's the trick to like make your foot good when you have to play a bunch of notes in a row? Good question. I feel uh, like let's that's go to the not... overhead again quickly if we can. Chris. All steady. I know we got a great overhead shot of this. It's coming. I know it's coming. Shot. Overhead cam's coming. There it is. Here's play it again. Like I'm using a lot of toe. Yeah, so try bringing your foot back in the board a little bit. Okay. You can even move the seat back just a little bit for yourself. Give you a little more leverage. See if that helps you. It's also like calf muscles, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. There you go. And I'm just using like a lot of toe. I'm leaving yeah. my heel planted. And that's that's certainly a way of doing it. That's nothing wrong with that. That'll work great. Okay, so let's add eighth notes on the hi hat while you're doing that. Let's we'll see what happens. So There's gonna be a little bit of coordination now because you got a sixteenth note skip in the bass drum. You're right. I'm gonna oh. do that <laughs> immediately. Good, good choice, good challenge. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just beating up the hat when I play the foot. That's, that's not all. bad. Yeah, this is suffering when my foot has to do that. You got it though. Okay, so that's almost all of it. So oh, good. One more thing. So now this you're gonna open the hi hat with your other foot. 
Oh, See, good. yeah, I figured yeah. that was coming. Oh, yeah. that's like so you can open it on one, <laughs> yep. and it should last, in, in a perfect world, it's going to yep. last a quarter note. One, two. So like, actually, like, actually no, pardon what? me, it's an eighth note. Yeah, that's uh, you're looking sense. at me like, that's wrong, <laughs> no. you're, you're I don't think that's what you want me Yeah, I know, I'm already <laughs> losing. This, my, my, my teaching is going to get graded as well, it's fair. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, so it's, I, I it's mean, open and closed, open, so it's open on one, closed on and. Yeah, just do that. Just do that like, one and two and three, yeah. But open on one, not yeah, the end of four. That's right. Two, three. Add the snare. I, I want to do it leading into one for sure. You got it. <laughs> do I though? And do you want that? That's sound. perfect. That's perfect. That's what we're after? Okay, cool. Okay. I mean, you put my feet in there, it's all gonna fall. Well, <laughs> now I'll, I'll leave this to your discretion. You can choose to add a part at a time if you like, whatever's, what do you think is gonna be most effective for you to get that oh, to work I see. together? No idea. Let's just try. Let's to find see out. See what happens, right? Let's do like, it. That's, that's what practicing is. You're like, well, let's try this, and if it doesn't work, let's we'll do find it. another way. Oh, but. Okay. Shoot. I can take out the, the open yep. hat for the moment. Nope. What's that? It's bad. I mean, do we... You can do it. Kind of. That's pretty quick. Of. Now we're, we're doing this in a very abridged period sure. of time here. If I gave you ten minutes with that, that you'd have it perfectly. Yeah, just turn the cameras off. Come back. That's later. right. That's, that's not what we're here for. It's definitely the sixteens on the bass drum just made me go like, "What?" Mm. Okay, yeah. so quickly like before before we finish before, that, so good choice. What's going through your head when you're doing that? What are your what's what are you thinking about how to make that better? Like, what's what's happening? I would slow it down. Go ahead. And that's the answer, like anything you want to make better, right? Just slow it down. Um, but then also it's fun because it's like I don't always, like I'm tracking three different things at once, uh -huh. right? And it's like we don't usually track three different, oh, four. It's the fourth one that's getting me. It's the opening foot here. Right, that feels okay. Hat, this coordination is getting a bit better. But then I put that in there, yeah. and then it's like that extra piece of like, whoa, what happens to the rest of the bar? So, let's see. So not to start without it. And then, it's the two feet at once. Mm -hmm. Which is why you chose this yeah. one, clearly. It's like, both feet at the same time. Yeah, it's one, great. they're going in different directions. Yeah, they go different directions. Okay. Not so bad. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's mostly I it. I mean, it, that's a bit of a, of a <laughs> vari variation of it. That's exactly. Oh, did it. I change it? Shit. Great what job. Did I do. I liked it though. <laughs> it would certainly work. What was Aaron, uh, Give me back what's your Angela. opinion here? What do you think? Ah, uh, sounds great. For Kyle rushing you into learning it into what was it I forced you into this. Yeah, because Kate, Katie's a perfectionist. She's like, what yeah, like, did I what do? Was it supposed to? I know, what was it supposed to be? Uh, so uh, you're adding added, a bass drum on the and drum, of one, which is yeah. okay. That's that's so fine. Do, ka, do, 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 ka, So I just do, added an extra ka. on the end of one. And you're missing the one on that one. That one was missing. Was there another one there? No, you got it right now. There it is. Okay, try one more time. Oh, because it, oh, it's because my other foot, mm -hmm. my feet want to work ah! together. It's a total foot cheat, right? You're like, well, this foot goes down, so that foot That's goes right. down. That's uh, right. This is what our brains love to do, right? Just like round things out to make them easier on ourselves. Yep. Uh, evidenced right here. Yeah. So it was that instead. <laughs> Without 
Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Okay. He says, I'll go back and practice. Yeah, we'll get together again later. What in the world am I supposed to do <laughs> with these things? <laughs> Make me feel better this about needing to practice. Are you going to come, I, I get, gonna come over here? This is great. Well, yeah. How about three? Okay. Like, no this pressure. This is not something I can sing to you from afar. All how right. You okay. Can you put them down on the microphone? Great. Here's I three. got that done. <laughs> no problems. All right. And then you're going to take the one on the outside and you're going to layer it on top of the one on the inside. Well, I, I so there's a few there. different ways. This is what we call four mallets. Okay. You use it on marimba, vibraphone, xylophone, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few different grips. There's not that many different ways it can go. So you either hold them in this direction. Oh, I like that. Or you okay. go the other way and hold them. That one's called cross grip. There's another way um, where you don't touch them in your hands at all. It's called Stephen's grip. That's me semi-demonstrating That's badly. amazing. That's like traditional grip. I can't do that. So I'm going to do this one. It's not so good with these kind of mallets either. I'm yeah, do so this. That one, yeah. This feels natural You know, I didn't even have to tell you what to do. I was going to be like, put your index fingers through and like wrap your hands around the sticks and you just did it. And so, I feel like... Congrats. Thank you. I feel like the... Outer mallets are static, and I'm moving these two fellas. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you're going to move both of them, but what I want you to do is I want you to get your thumbs on the insides. So, like, put your thumb on, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, in the four mallet grits, it's your thumb that's controlling the inside mallets. Well, as soon as the interval's wide enough, and this is a really narrow vintage vibrant okay. zone. Good uh, thing for me. And you're gonna, yeah, so we're going to stay to stuff where your thumb isn't doing a heck of a lot. Okay. Um, but if I was going out into octaves, like my thumb is controlling those inside mallets, and then my index finger and kind of the rotation of my hand is doing the outside mallets. Oh, okay, okay. Right, and then you can play like... Good Lord. I know, these bars are so small. Oh, that like seems that really straightforward, yeah. Don't worry, that's not what we're going to do today. All right, Kyle. Uh, that's right. Montuno, let's go. Uh, <laughs> Montuno. Okay, we got it. Okay, so I was going to do a little... We're just going to try a little, like, minimalistic vibraphone pattern. It's going to be fine. Uh, so what I want you to do with your left hand, you're going to find an E and a B for me. Okay. Thankfully, you, someone wrote them I on know, the keys. I know. You can use these ones here. I'm I'll just cheating. tell you what bars. Yeah, Those that ones? one and that one, okay. totally. And then just practice like going back and forth, like slow. We're just like, we learn everything best slowly. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Totally, like, it's great. It's perfect. If you can make them a little wider, like have them the width of those bars. Yeah, right. and then you just go back and forth. And <laughs> you don't have to change any it hand It feels distance. so foreign. Yep. If you can get your thumb in a little bit on top of that mallet. Yeah, that's what feels it. weird to me. There you go. I feel like it's like Jeopardy. I mean, there is a pedal on this thing <gasps> that's going to give you like way more sound. Okay. Um, now, what are we doing with this? As you can see from like where our legs are, it's a rather short vibraphone. I don't know about that. I find, it's, like I, this. I find it's the perfect height, personally. <laughs> that's right. Okay. On top of the vibraphone. Okay. Cool. And then you're going to give that hand a rest. And then you're going to take your right hand in and you're going to find those two bars. So we're going to go... Bar uh, on the left, bar in the middle. Yeah, okay. C sharp and G sharp. Good lord. Okay. That's right, because there's on. a podcast. You tell them what they're doing. So. Yes, you, that's good. That's right. Radio is yeah. the theater of the mind. Yes. And and then here, you're just going to lock your okay. hand in that position. Totally. And you're just going to use your wrist. Yeah, and you're just going to drop on those bars. Okay. Cool. Then here's the next part of your challenge, because you made me play hi-hat foot. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, your hands are going to be kind of on top of each other. Okay. So you're going to have your right hand up in such a way that your left hand can still play. Oh, sure, Maybe yeah. Maybe you're angling yeah, it yeah. to the side. Yeah, It's going to change my, my hand angle a little bit. Yeah, right. so you can still... But you're going to, like, open those up a little bit. Okay, yeah. Stay. It's like yeah. chopsticks. And so you harder. can extend your index finger. <laughs> Yeah. And just like brace it. Yeah, like, because this is a, again, this really skinny bars on this. It's kind of like a glockenspiel. Hey. Oh, I love, that is like, that takes like all the things in my brain. Because it's like. Me too. Well, we're sorry, Aaron is like, well, you in there. It's because, you know, there's, there's only so many targets on the drum sets. Here it's like all the notes really do. Like I can cheat. I can play the ride cymbal by accident. Yeah. I can't play like an F sharp by accident. That's not going to work. I don't know. Because sounds like, well, look, I play an F sharp instead. <laughs> Still sounds good. Okay. G sharp. F sharp. I pick something friendly. Okay, you're showing off a little now. <laughs> <laughs> can we get that one more shot? So was it there and there? Okay, no. but. Oh, goodness. Have your, have your thumb on the inside of your left hand. I can't do that. Yes, you can. Doesn't want to do that. Just flip your hand over for a second. Let's just check. Yeah. So, I mean, I that, have... You know what? That looks an awful lot like drum set stick grip. Yes. Right? So, I mean, when you're holding 
So it is really aside, not that different. Welcome to the percussion department <gasps> this week at Tremio. It's, it's not that different. It's, not. it's like your thumb and your index finger is what holds on to the mallet, okay. just like drums. And then <sighs> when you put the other mallet in there, like you flip my hand over, it's still like a drum grip. I mean, and that's one of the, this is this is where I start commercialing for for other percussion stuff. Like everything you do in the percussion family is cross training for other playing, oh, right? Like this makes you better on other things. My my left hand sucks at this. Well, it's because you're you're, I can't you're, do it. you're you're not stabilizing that mallet. To you're get right. Your thumb I'm not. So it's like index finger hangs out with the one mallet and stabilizes. And you can just think about okay. it's like both your thumb and your index finger are just pushing out a little bit to create some stability. Yeah. So get your thumb on the inside. Yeah. Like actually on the inside. Yeah, and then have yep, 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 like yep. That. Oh, like that. Yeah. <gasps> That's way it. better. There we go. <laughs> I mean, and everyone's hands are different shapes, so there's going to be things that vary. Okay, I gotta try and do that with this hand. Okay. Yeah, that well, that hand's a little more narrow, so I am just kind of holding it in my hand. Oh. Oh, it's so pretty. All right. Here we go. How'd I do? <laughs> Well, like, that, you know, I didn't ace it over there either. I you, got some homework to do. You know what, though? I got a cool new beat that's to work on. super cool. Thank you for showing me that because yeah, yeah. that's amazing. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the next clip that we have. I think that's where we're at. No, we're going to stay here. I forget now. I didn't have my laptop in front of me. <laughs> Aaron, what are we doing? <sighs> Give me There's another clip. There's more chatting. There's lots of stuff happening. There's lots of stuff going on. Okay. Oh yes, of course, we did that, we did that, that's great. Oh yeah, we're gonna show this quick clip and then we're gonna, so you can stay, you can get your choice. You wanna stay here or go to the drum kit? Where do you wanna be? Drum kit's got a comfy chair. Okay, cool, great. Besides, I'm on drum I wanna show this quick clip. This, this is, is like added um, what happens when mallets attack. Check this oh, out. God, this one. Adjust my mic. Doo -doo -doo. Mine went sideways on me, that's why. There we go. Nope. <laughs> I love live things. This is like, are we live right now? We are. Oh, yeah. This is, this is considered oh, highbrow entertainment, that everybody. Poor, that poor oh, this thing just doesn't want to stay. Sorry. Not, not, not the one that, that played the bass drum, the one that got hit with the bass drum, Alex. Uh, uh, again, I understand. Also a student situation. I understand that person was okay. I should hope so. They took it pretty good, though. I tell you. Yeah. So I how mean, did that they happen? They tell you to like expect the unexpected. Is that is that like? <laughs> have you ever had that happen to you? Probably not. No. <laughs> you... I mean, we all have stories about like playing something. I was in my undergrad. We were doing this big wind ensemble piece for like open with a big percussion. <laughs> And dugga 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 da, and stick goes flying and clatter, clatter, clatter mm. in the show on the stage, right? Like we've all had those sorts of moments. Because totally. when you play, you don't want to grip on the stick super tight. It's right. the way of a good sound. So that means occasionally you're going to lose sticks. Totally. Yeah. Or, or but, yes. crash cymbal. Uh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I sat for, it's probably a 50 minute symphony or so. I had crash cymbal part for the last like 10 bars, and I sat the whole time, got up very quietly. <sighs> Pick them up, crash, 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 crash. Last note, crash. The cymbal breaks. It's the last note, you know. So the whole band cuts off, <laughs> and just rattles around for a good 15, 20 seconds or so. Oh, I love it. And we all have these stories. Yes. All right, Katie, yes. it's time for blast beats. I'm gonna rattle off 20 something? questions. Oh, I gotta just talk. Okay. 20 cool. questions in 60 seconds. Okay. If you get them all done in a minute. Yep. One of our uh, folks on YouTube is going to win a prize. <gasps> okay. So, so YouTube, I'm doing you guys, this for YouTube. everybody on YouTube, Go you guys fast. have to watch cheer the for uh, Katie. She does not know what these questions are. No idea. Although apparently it's right. somewhat tailored to me. Maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. Uh, Chris, are you ready to go in there? All right. I'm going to count you down. Here we go. Three, two, one. <clears throat> Nylon or wood tip? Wood tip. Favorite place on the planet? Oh, warm beach somewhere. Let's say Hawaii. Heel up or heel down on the bass drum pedal? Uh, heel down, we've learned. There we go. Uh, what are you listening to right now? Oh, nothing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coated heads or clear heads? Uh, coated but thin. Okay. Uh, artist you wish to work with? Oh, pass. I can come back to those kind of ones. Okay. Symbols, clean or dirty? Clean. Golf or tennis? Neither. Mm. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a tricky one. Uh, 
pedals, chain strap, or direct drive? You probably have no opinion. I have no opinion okay. on this. TV or movies? Uh, TV. How many snare drums is too many? Three? Three. Four? Uh, four. Four, okay. Same answer I think Jonathan Moffat gave. Uh, white wine or red wine? White wine. Single pedal or double pedal? Single is all I got. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer to fly or drive? Fly. Fly? Uh, are concert toms still cool? Were concert toms not cool? Mm, that's a good one. T-shirts or well-dressed? Oh, I ran out of time. I know. I anything for free. What <laughs> question did I get to? Uh, you got as far as, as Moffat did, actually, yeah. So we'll finish him off. I'll good, give someone away anyways. Good company. So, uh, uh, T-shirt or well-dressed? Yes. I go both ways. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you prefer lacquer or wrapped drums? I don't have a preference. Well, mm. yeah, what's my drum? <laughs> lacquer. <laughs> Steak lacquer? or seafood? Um, seafood. Great. Uh, vinyl or streaming? Streaming, honestly. Streaming, okay. Useful. And the last question is, favorite piece of percussion? Like favorite instrument? Yep. Oh, I mean, one of the reasons why we play percussion is so we don't have to choose a thing. You do now. Right? <laughs> Oh, bottom octave of a five octave marimba. <laughs> that's a lot. That's very specific. <laughs> like, fine, I'll choose. Yeah, I love like the that. The dark chocolate, of, or, or uh, I mean, it so depends on the context. Or it's like timpani, or it's like big, like satisfying concert bass drum. Right. I mean, again, this is why this is one of the fun things about playing both drums and percussion is there's just so many instruments and so many things you get to do and hang out on. I love it. You want to be the people that don't have to choose. I'm gonna play piccolo every day forever. It's like totally. no, not me. All right. It's time for our student of the week, Chris. I'm going to switch these two segments around just so you know. Uh, we're going to come back to the groove of the week right after this. So uh, this week's student of the week is Fred H. This is one of our members here on Drumeo, and he is the student of the week. I'm going to put my laptop down. I look like an idiot with my laptop in my hand. There we go. I'm going to use your drum as a stand. My apologies. I don't know which is worth more. We'll find out later. Should uh, be on the vibrant so, obviously. Yeah, right? Uh, Fred's been... Interested in playing the drums for a long time, but he got his first kit in 2005. Uh, Boston's More Than a Feeling and Foxy Get Off, I don't know that song, were two of the first songs that he remembers learning on his friend's drum kit, a set of Silver Rogers. Uh, he bought himself a Gretsch Nighthawk kit after being asked to join a band uh, and in 2005. And after, uh, after all, drummer with no drums, not really a drummer. It's hard to be a drummer with no drum set. Uh, he says he recently upgraded to a Mapex Armory Redwood Burst Kit. That sounds pretty. With Zildjian cymbals. Uh, he says with a few of his older drums and cymbals included. Because, you know, drummers, if you have old drums and new drums, you just have more drums. It's great. Uh, so congratulations to Fred H. for being Student of the Week. Here is a quick clip of Fred playing. Check it out. That's heavy on my mind. Then I look at you. And the world all right with me Just one look at you And I know it's gonna be A lovely day Absolutely great job, Fred H. Congratulations on being student of the week. I love you doing the open hi-hat thing in the choruses, just like the recording, because it's so cool. Absolutely loved it. All right, now we're going to do Groove of the Week. Uh, Katie's going to do Groove of the Week. And we're going to do something. Drum. This is uh, like a, a, a classic, classical drum. This is like the... This is like the brown-eyed girl of the, uh, <laughs> of the snare drum repertoire. Uh, this is uh, Ravel's Bolero. The, the reason I thought this would be a good groove of the week is because if you are interested in improving your rudiments and your drumming in general, but maybe you want to try a different way of practicing it, this song is perfect for that. <laughs> Look it up, Ravel's Bolero. There are a zillion versions of it, but what you'll notice is there is a very consistent and specific snare drum part. And I think it's 15 minutes long. Give or take. The Depends only, how fast it right, goes. The only variation is the very end. <laughs> yep. And the dynamic range is pretty big. Right? Yeah. Like you're starting at your softest. 
Um, yeah, but it's 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 a great exercise and what a great way to practice control and consistency because it is that one part all yeah. the way through. So let's bring up that uh, sheet music there so we can see it. Here it comes. There it is. Look at that. It's in oh, three, four. It looks so weird. So it looks, doesn't it though? <laughs> so now, have you played this I just before? mean compared to like seeing it on the sheet, like right. the engraved Absolutely. sheet of music. This is literally the entire thing <laughs> times. Like, we think it's 215 bars. I, uh, I, around. I'm sure. Something around. Yeah. yeah. Just just keep going. So, <laughs> you want to play it for us? <laughs> yeah, we're just going to do you know, general dynamic. Over and over and over. So clean right? and precise. <laughs> Any advice you would give to someone who wants to play this? Absolutely. So as concert snare players, we, I mean, also all snare players, but we really care about getting a really consistent sound. Uh, so for sticking, I'm going to use, I'm a right-handed drummer, so I use my right hand as much as possible. So my right hand's playing all of the eighth notes, so that I'm really just getting that same sound on the drum. Because uh, even on a great drum, like, you're going to get... You know, there's there's a variation in there, so I want to avoid hearing that on my... I want my sound to stay really clean. Uh, so I'm going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, 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 left, right, left, right. I like to start the triples with my left hand, so I'm landing on the strong beats with my right. Um, where did I get to? Beat two, the second bar, so I'm going to go right, left, 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 right, right, the whole way through. And then if you're left-handed, you just flip it all around. I or, you know, just tr to give yourself the extra challenge and drum it left-handed. Because yeah. we should all do more of that. But I, I love that you make the sticking work for you so that it's consistent. You're like, I like it to do it this way where there's two rights in a row. Because, I mean, you could just play it hand-to-hand -hand all the way through if you wanted to, right? We tend not to. There you go. It's the collective we. Like, it's like I've learned, that, you know, you learn these stickings and, and you they're, they're, they're there for reasons. Um, I mean, yeah, you could. But and then I hear that difference, and it bugs me. Ah, yes. um, especially, I mean, like listen to the track. Like when it starts, it's just kind of you and some basses, and not much is going mm. on, right? And then as this piece progresses, so it starts very, very quiet. You're, but you can't use your like lightest, quietest sticks because you're going to end up the piece going. Right? Someone else is joining you in the percussion section to yeah. make it even bigger. I put two of you on snare drums at the end. Um, so you can't muffle your drum down a ton either, right? It's a great exercise in like mid-range mid sticks and this is what you're with for the next while. <laughs> um, but you can play around with where you are on the drum. There's players that'll start off, you know, a little choked up on your sticks. So you can get that really little sound and then like start to sneak back once you head around mezzo piano and then you can move on the drum. Um, but moving on the drum too, it's like you get a color change. So you pick your moments, right? Like we talk about sometimes like we play loud here and play soft stuff here, but the drum will sound different. So sometimes you're just using one spot of the drum and doing it all there. Love it. Um, and of course the dynamic shift, it's stick height, yep. right? So you can play louder, your sticks are coming up higher. Uh, and it's a great exercise in just keeping both your sticks nice and matched or your sextuplets aren't gonna sound good, right? If you got then you're gonna be out of sync and just one hand's louder than the other. So it's really a great exercise for your ears because all you're doing is playing the snare drum. Yeah, Aaron, yeah. you mentioned you've actually heard of folks playing the quiet part one hand. Yeah, for the slower version. I was okay. like, I know, earlier, I was like, maybe Aaron can do that. I was like. I mean, I'd like, da, 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 like super slow. Like I, I start to peter out. Like <laughs> you, could, you could do it as a, a dirge. I'm like, what tempo dun, would that be? Dun, dun, I mean, dun, the tempo for this should be somewhere, we should talk about that, um, I think, Marked 72 on some scores, but like 68 to 72, like somewhere in there. You're going to hear recordings where things go faster, things go mm -hmm. slower, depending on the taste of the conductor and the orchestra. Makes sense. So, but of course, like anything, learn it slower and then work it up to, to where you want to play it. Super cool. Now it's time to show off this really cool Ooh, piece of gear. Yes, every week on the show, we like to feature a piece of gear. Now, we are not sponsored by anybody. We get gear sent to us to show off and talk about and review. And today, oh, there's a thing on that. There's this really cool symbol bag from Tackle. Uh, have you heard of Tackle Instrument Supply? I don't know if you have before. Do they make stick bags? They do, yes. Like wax canvas stick yes. bags? I've looked up their stuff before. They look cool. This I wanted is... one a little bigger because I have lots of stuff. Their the... stick bags aren't that big. That's true. Yeah. Well, not yet. Saying Tackle, make me a concert stick bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is their wax canvas symbol bag. So it's super cool. Check it can out. I come, can I come? Can we please? Come get your guys' opinion on this one. 
It's got lots of cool stuff on it. Oh, it's backpack? Yeah. Put my symbols. I like that. It's not you light have to, like, on no, its own. But it's comfy. Yeah. Right? Like you get like symbol bags that have backpack straps and you're like, well, that's going to be great until I load like a few pairs of crashes in there and mm. then it's, the straps are going to go. Totally. Whereas this feels, you know, really nicely sturdy. Canvas and leather. Really I'm nice just zipper. I'm going to explore this. Like, how do Please. I, how do I open it? You, oh, you legit have to like... It's like, yeah. It's not a fake one. That's cool. Sticks? Actually, they like have this what, cool thing. This is like small symbols in front? It could be. See this though? These straps? Yeah. You put your stick bag in there when you're on the road, mm. you can throw them in there. Yeah, that's nice. I don't quite understand it, but that's cool. You could. It depends. I think, <laughs> it, works stick best. Bag. <laughs> I think it works best with their stick bag. Ah, which yes. would make sense because the then you have like phone. the whole tackle <laughs> set up. Sleeves. Aaron, what kind of uh, symbol bag do you have? Uh, a really, really old Zildjian cloth bag that's falling apart yeah. that I've had since I was 16. You, 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 you one don't of get these. to win mm. this stuff, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't, unfortunately. No. <laughs> but it's really well made. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, 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 they make things that seem to be built to last. And uh, I would t totally use this. Would that be something you would use as a concert percussionist? Not as much. I like the shoulder bags oh, to be yeah. super And honest. you also have, you carry like small symbols too, right? Yeah, like I don't need a symbol bag. This no, like <laughs> no. Um, I mean, over there I've got like a eighteen inch tuxedo bag, which is kind of my go to. Um, but this is really nice. Well, we're gonna give that bag away. Cool. So these sell in the U.S. for about I think it's a hundred and. I'm giving back to Aaron now. Yeah, please. Aaron, check complete. it out. <laughs> Aaron, check it out. Yeah. Two, sorry, two nineteen U.S. So it's Ooh. not an inexpensive bag, but a good symbol bag is worth the money. Um, I think my bag. Because they have actually now, last. Yeah, the bag I have now, I've had for probably twelve years, and I beat it up seriously. Um, and I'm looking to get a new one. I might want to get one of these. Tackle also makes a leather version of this, which is even nicer. But uh, I think this would suit. You know. I like the wax canvas. You can't yeah. hurt it very easily. What do you think, Aaron? Would that be on your list of symbol bags you might get yourself? It's pretty dang nice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's really well made. Uh, we're gonna give that away. Let's give it away right now. We're gonna give that away to one of our members. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'm sorry. This is members only. If you wanna be a member, that's how you would get one of these cool prizes. How do you do that? You go to drumio.com, check out our seven day trial, maybe come join us, hang out. We do all kinds of cool stuff. In fact, after this uh, podcast, we're gonna hang out with Katie and answer more questions from the members. Uh, so let's find out who we're gonna give that to. Let's see. Uh, Katie, pick a number between, oh, I don't know, one and seven. Five. Five, she says. All right. We have a winner. Greg K., congratulations, you have won this beautiful Ooh. tackle, <clears throat> waxed canvas and leather symbol bag. Email me at krad at drumio.com and we will get that sent out to you as soon as we possibly can. Congratulations. All right, one more thing to do, and that is to give away a free one year's membership to someone out there on YouTube to Drumeo. We got lots of folks watching. We have, I think I saw 400 watching. I think a 330 right now, that's cool. Uh, let's see, um, pick a number between, or actually pick a letter. Let's go with a letter, any letter. Don't pick anything weird though. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, Katie and Kyle, so let's go with K. K, oh, I like it. Okay. <laughs> well, those have the to... same initials, which I didn't realize until you were emailing me when you were saying Oh my goodness, you're right. Yep. That's true. Well, there we go. Yeah, it's gonna go to Kane. It's kind of a nice so combination. Got Michael K got the one bag and Kane got the membership. There you this go, is, yeah. Today is brought to you by the letter K here at That's Romeo. right, <laughs> for Crash. Um, Wait, Congratulations, what? Kane. Uh, you have won a one year's membership to Drumeo. Email me, krad at drumeo.com. We'll get you all set up. Yeah, that's it. An hour goes by just like that. It does. There was so much we didn't get to. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have you back sometime. What do you guys think? Do you guys want to learn more about classical percussion? Do you find this fascinating? Do you find it boring? Be honest. I know the folks out there on YouTube will be. Please. Let's see what they say. Oh yeah, they're still debating on whether they should have a different name with a K. I get that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, Katie, for coming yeah, and hanging out with welcome. us today. You're um, welcome. Are we? Do I have a final thought that I throw throughout? Oh, I'd love. Cool. You have okay, one? I wonder, like, yes. Um, so I mean, if you are a drummer and you haven't checked out other styles of music, like, just find some shows to go to wherever you are. Especially if you're a student, you can get cheap tickets um, to so many different sorts of organizations. Like, go find 
go find a symphony show to check out. Look up the music, because there's lots of music out there that doesn't have a lot of percussion. Uh, and there's lots of music out there that has tons of percussion. So do a little homework. Uh, you want to see some like killer timpani play and go watch like Beethoven 7, Beethoven 9. Uh, anything after Beethoven's going to have some good percussion going. But yeah, just listen to some recordings. Be like, ooh, that sounds cool. Shasha Cobra Symphony, let's go. Um, and just, you know, check out some music shows, check out some other things. Like, the more, you know, in a percussionist or a drummer's life, like, the more stuff you listen to, the more kinds of different music you get exposed to, the more different paths you might end up going down. Right? Like, there's so much that happens where you're like, oh, yeah, I'm totally going to do this thing. And you go to the show and you're like, well, that's cool. I mean, that's how so many of us ended up as percussionists, is we were like, oh, I'm playing piano and oh, they need a percussionist in band and oh, this is cool. Right, so explore, listen to other stuff. It'll make you a more interesting drummer too, having other styles that are like in your wheelhouse or things that are, you know, in your ears. So true. So there's my final thought. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, yeah. Aaron, thanks for mediating today. Hey, anytime. Yeah. That was great. To hang out with uh, Aaron again. Everybody, we'll see you again next week. Next week, we have the great Thomas Lang here. We're going to talk, I, we're, at this point, we're going to challenge him with a bunch of rudiment stuff. I think we're going to see what he can do to a paradiddle. We're going to see if he can destroy the paradiddle. <laughs> You can break the paradiddle. You can destroy it. I don't know what he's going to do to it. But uh, we'll see you again next week, everybody. Take care.